Hello to you once again. At the end of my previous video I mentioned that I would be putting on a study of my own involving a king rook bishop versus a king and rook. Well this is the study. The task set here is white to checkmate in four moves or failing that black gives up his rook for white's bishop and it would be an easy one for white. So what is the key move here? Well a clue as to what white wants to do is to play his rook to here and then ultimately down. The only problem with that at the moment is that black would be able to play here. Check. The bishop would come in and then the king would come here and he's hoping to be able to get away. And he can certainly extend it even if he's beaten in the end he wouldn't be beaten anywhere near as quickly. So what we're wanting to do is to keep all of that in mind but to find a much quicker route of dealing with this. Can you see it? Well, it involves one in-between move. You're just going to play for time here so that you can stop his king being on the queen side. You want to drive it to the king side. Well, the key move, of course, is rook d1 check, and then he is forced to play king e8. And then, and only then, do you play rook h1. And you are indeed threatening to go down to h8 and finish him off. Whether he moves his king to d8, to here, or to f8, it would still be rook h8. So really in that position he must move his rook and it must be a checking move. Because failing to check it would of course be rook h8 mate. So he checks. What do we do here then? Well, we do what I demonstrated just a, a few moments ago, bishop to there. And when you look at that position, there is no defence to rook h8 mate on the fourth move, unless, like I say, he gives up his rook for bishop. So let's just say he does give it up. What do we do? Well, of course, what we do is we take it. And then, of course, he wouldn't want to play king d8 because it would be rook h8 mate. So he comes here quite naturally. So we can certainly begin to restrict him to a considerable degree here, something along those lines. You would force him either to the back rank or to the king side, and you would mate him in fairly short order. I think that demonstrates that we have an easy win by playing a waiting move, so always watch out for those sorts of possibilities. But do bear in mind, as I've made clear on a, a few videos now, that in this type of ending with a king, rook and bishop against a king and rook, don't believe that it's an automatic draw. You need to try and keep in mind certain classes of position and this is yet another one. The Philidor one that I discussed in the previous videos is a fantastic one, there's no doubt about that. But there are, there are many and varied positions in this type of ending where you can win it. So always keep it in mind that there is a possibility or two still waiting to be found. Enjoy your chess and goodbye for now.